black police officer decides to uh, report misconduct of other cops. Guess what happens? He gets demoted, he gets walked out the building, a lot of bad things. Let me take you to Kansas City, Missouri. A black detective alleges that he was actually punished for reporting another officer's misconduct. Sounds familiar? Let's get into the background. Until about six months ago, author William Ham, 52, was a member of the Drug Enforcement Administration's Kansas City Interdiction Task Force for 16 years. 16 years until he decided to speak out after, after another detective violated a person's rights. So here you got Arthur, good cop, been there a long time, knows the ropes, knows people, knows the culture. And he decides to report a detective who is violating the rights of another citizen. According to Arthur, the lawsuit filed by this cop in Jackson County Circuit Court, the other detective who performed an illegal search was never punished. But he was demoted, stripped of his drug enforcement agency credentials, his department laptop and vehicle and escorted out of the building. The experience was degrading and embarrassing and I felt like a criminal according to Officer Willingham. Well, once again, the culture of policing is that of, let's say the culture of gang activity or the culture of the mafia. When you decide to do the right thing and report on their criminal conduct, they treat you like what? The criminal, because you have gone adverse to the culture. You may be aligned with policy, but you are adversarial to their culture. What you're doing is protected on paper, but it is not protected in sentiment and inside of the culture of that department. You see, if there were actually way more good cops than bad cops as they would like us to believe, keep this in mind. If there were more good cops than bad cops, that means by definition of culture that the good cops would make the bad cops feel uncomfortable. If this was about numbers, the good cops would outrank the bad cops. The good cops would be in supervisory positions, not the bad cops. You see. I'm painting a picture here. You can't have it both ways. Either most of you are good or most of you are not. And for those cops who watch the show, if you're one of those who say, well, doc, I don't get involved in violating the rights of others, but I'm not going to become a rat against other cops. Well, you're a bad cop. Please keep in mind. Evil exists because good men, good women sit back and do nothing. You're part of the problem, not part of the solution. Don't think you're good just because you're not the one physically shooting somebody in the back. If you protect the culture, the blood is in your on your hands too, okay? Um, William Ham, who is black, obviously believes that the demotion was a retaliation for reporting the unethical behavior and part of the Kansas City Police Department's pattern of racial discrimination. He filed the lawsuit against the Kansas City Board of Police Commissioners, a panel that oversees the department. Let's put up all of these commissioners, every single one of them. Members of the board, first row left to right, Bishop Mark Tolbert, Commissioner Kathy Dean, Commissioner Don Wagner, and then second row left to right, Commissioner Don Kramer, Mayor Quentin Lucas, and secretary slash attorney, David Kenner. Those are your overseers. The incident that led to the misconduct, here it is. The black detective said that he and another detective were scanning a Greyhound terminal as part of a federal task force last October when a canine led them to two suitcases in the luggage compartment of the bus. Police searched the two suitcases with the owner's permission found no narcotics. However, William Ham said as they were putting the luggage back, he saw the other detective manipulating a separate duffel bag in an attempt to fill its contents. Upon observing the illegal search, plaintiff questioned his fellow detective about his illegal conduct. To which he replied, What plaintiff observed was not what he usually does, the lawsuit says. 
Pursuant to KCPD's policy, plaintiff immediately informed his sergeant and prepared a memorandum describing the illegal behavior that he witnessed. What did he do? He followed the policy. He followed the policy. He's been a cop for 16 years. He followed the policy, did a report, filed the report, and gets demoted, stripped, ridiculed, walked out of the building. As I've said before, culture eats policy alive every day of the week, no matter what. And you gotta stop thinking reform only. You gotta start thinking replacement. These cats are rotten to the core. Willingham alleges that was not the only or not the first time someone complained about that particular detective. He was told that the detective received an instructional notice, but had no discipline. Um, as a task force officer working with the DEA's office, um, Willingham submitted federal cases for review. Let's go to the background of that. In January, he submitted a case to the US Attorney's Office where he warned the narcotics unit chief of critical information about one of the detectives that he should be aware of. Willingham was legally required to include discoverable evidence with the file. Willingham said he found out about two weeks later that federal prosecutors rejected the case. Four days later, he was transferred to the investigations bureau to the patrol unit. While they opened an investigation into his conduct, Willingham superiors accused him of, and I quote, conduct that might compromise the integrity and thus undercut the public confidence and violate policy on releasing personnel information. Who's the interim chief of police right now for this outfit? Put him up. Look at that. His name is Joseph, Joseph Maven, okay? The department said on August 12th that Williamham is currently a detective in the investigations bureau. The department also issued this statement regarding the lawsuit. It says, and I quote, we want to assure the public that the KCPD is committed to ensuring a fair and equitable workplace free from harassment or discrimination. Also regarding investigative requirements and guidelines, we are very familiar with the requirements of the 14th Amendment and have several layers of supervisory accountability and review within our department as a part of the investigative partnership with our federal partners. All right, you see what's happening here. Good guy, bad culture, good guy, right policy, adverse environment. Good cop tries to do the right thing and he's excommunicated by the bad culture in his police department. AB thoughts here. If this does not expose that there is an issue in the Kansas City Police Department, then I have no idea what is. Okay, that officer had an obligation to protect and serve and he did so to the community that he is servicing right now. When you have a constitutional violation, the department is obligated to handle that appropriately. And I don't think they did so in this case. So I hope there's a full investigation into their department. Yeah, and this also shifts the narrative. There are not way more good cops than bad cops. You cannot claim just because you're not actively involved in violating the civil rights of others that you are somehow a good cop when you protect the culture of bad police. 